<clears throat> okay. Tell one week five chemistry. There's a shit ton of memorizing you have to do. Uh, so let's not waste time. I opened it here. Okay. This is on the Google Drive. Memorize. Okay. Compounds containing these are always soluble, meaning they dissolve. Okay. If it has Na, K plus, NH4, NO3, CH3SO. If they have these, they always dissolve. Okay. These compounds that include Cl, Br, I, SO4, they are always soluble except when you have Cl with Ag, Cl with Pb, Br with Ag, Br with Pb, and so on and so forth. Okay? Then, SO4, again, it's always soluble except when it's with Ba, Ca, Pb. Okay? And I personally, I still memorize shit. Okay? I'm recording this. So I forgot everything already. If you want a way, an easy way to memorize this, if something is not soluble, it means it forms a precipitate. Okay? If it forms a precipitate. We know AGCL is a white precipitate, AGBR is a creamy precipitate, and AGI is a yellow precipitate. Right? So, the ones that form precipitates only with AG are CL, BR, and I. Remember the halogens? Okay? We'll come in, they form with PB. Okay? Then for so, uh, SO4, it, it's not soluble with barium, calcium, and PB because it forms, you're going to need this later, it forms a white precipitate with them, okay? Uh, insoluble, the ones that are insoluble except with a key, CO3 with Na, K+, NH4. Remember, we said anything that has Na+, K+, or NH4, it's soluble. We rewrote it up here. Yeah? Okay? Ooh, same thing with OH-. Okay? Uh... So here when I wrote For example CaCO3 I meant that this is insoluble Okay so any compound containing CO3 Is always insoluble It makes a precipitate except for When it bonds with these ones up here Right Okay Now uh, No I still didn't start These ones you can skip them if you want the, These ones they were in the notes And memorize them if you want uh, was not uh, not required. Uh, test for halides. Okay, we know Cl. Okay, see to test for Cl, Br minus and I, we add AgNO3. We know this, right? But it has to be acidified. Acidified means you add an acid, either HNO3 or HCl. HNO3 is nitric acid. HCl is hydrochloric acid. You add one of them. Okay, plus AgNO3. We know you're gonna get white, creamy, yellow. Okay. Uh, it's important to know that the Cl minus uh, the precipitate will dissolve in NH3. Uh, it's important to know that the Br minus the precipitate of it will uh, dissolve after some time. Okay, and it's important to know that I minus will not dissolve in NH3. Okay, if you want in the drive chemistry, Fihon, uh, Hori, you can memorize it from here, and uh, not all of them are in my notes here. Not all of them. You're going to have to actually go through these, okay? Uh, the ones that aren't uh, in my notes, okay? The flame tests, you have to memorize them, and so on and so forth, okay? Make sure to read over this. Memorize every single one, okay? Memorize the color, memorize whatever, okay? You have to memorize. Okay, uh, where am I? Okay, these all dark when exposed to light. Okay, for anions, okay? To test for SO4 2 minus, you add... Oh, for all of these, you're going to add, well, not for all of them, for most of them, you, you're going to add either an acid or a base. SO42 minus, since it's minus. Okay, wait, no, I think that doesn't matter here. Yeah, yeah, sorry. SO42 minus, we add an acid, an acidified barium nitrate. Okay, you have to know that SO4 with barium gets you BaSO4, which is a white precipitate. But you can't just add barium, you have to add it in the form of a nitrate, and like something acidified. So either in the form of nitrate or add it to HCl, okay? So what's going to happen is SO4 to minus plus Ba2 plus gets you BaSO4, which is a white precipitate. And it's important to know it does not dissolve in acid. Why is this important? Because if you add barium to, to carbonate, you're also going to get white precipitate. If you add it to SO4, you're going to get white precipitate. And if you add it to SO3, you're going to get white precipitate. But how do you know that it's SO4 to minus? Because it does not dissolve in an acid. If you add an acid, it won't dissolve. Meshe? Yellow. We finished SO4. Hella SO3 2 minus. 
SO3 to minus, again, same as up, but we don't add barium. We add, we add any acid, okay? Because when the sodium, uh, when the sulfide, this is called sulfite, by the way. This is very important. This is sulfite and this is sulfate because they ask this, by the way. Okay, this is sulfate, this is sulfite. This now, the H plus with the SO3 to minus, okay, they're going to form SO2 plus H2O. How do you know that SO2 is formed? It has three forms. It is a choking smell. It turns litmus paper red because SO2 is an acidic gas. Okay, it changes potassium manganate from purple to colors. This was actually in the AMS from last week. Three, NO3 minus plus, okay, now to test for NO3. So we did SO4, we did SO3, now NO3. NO3, instead of adding an acid, we add a base. How I remember it is usually when you have a compound containing nitrogen, you're, you're probably going to end up with ammonia. And ammonia is always basic, so that's why you add a base. Okay, it's important that when you do NO3 plus base, to get NH3, that you add aluminium foil. Okay, usually, by the way, 99% of the time, the base you add is NaOH, okay? You won't see anything else. If you see NH4 plus a base NaOH, you're also going to get NH3, NH3, plus also you get water. How do you know to bolide? Aren't you adding NaOH in both of them? How do you distinguish each one? In NO3, not only are you adding NaOH, you're also adding aluminium, okay? If you don't add aluminium, it won't work. Okay, and you have to heat gently, so you have to warm it. Okay, how do you know that ammonium is formed? Ammonia, sorry, is formed. You get pungent smell, and you know that ammonia is basic, so it changes damp red litmus paper into blue. Okay, how do you know for CO3? CO3 is like the SO3. Almost the same thing, by the way. Okay, so I'll show you now the difference. So CO3, again, we add an acid, dilute acid. You're gonna, It's going to react with the H's to get carbon dioxide gas and H2O liquid. If you look at these reactions, they're pretty much the exact same. I don't think it's balanced, by the way. Yeah, it's not balanced. You're supposed to put the two. So the same reaction, but here it was SO2 gas. Here it was CO2 gas. Okay, so this is a nice way to remember it. Okay, how do you know that carbon dioxide is formed? The most important one, okay, it's acidic. It turns litmus paper from blue to red only for a short time, but the most important one, it turns lime water milky. Okay, people who do take bio should know this, uh, but it turns lime water milky. Okay, uh, and how do you know that any gas is evolved? That means you will see bubbles, okay? Okay, this table is very important. This is how I memorize it. You have three compounds, okay? When you dissolve them in NaOH, you're going to get a precipitate. When you dissolve them in NH3, you're going to get a precipitate except for calcium. Here's how, I, here's how I memorized it, okay? And I have the three compounds, okay? And I call them calzone, okay? For some of you, you know the sandwich. is a sandwich called calzone. Actually, in our cafeteria, we have it. How do I do it? Calzone. Okay, calzone. Then, I know I'm dissolving them. You For all of almost all of these reactions, you're dissolving them with either NOH or NH3. Okay, this is how I start. Oh, I put insoluble dash. Then, I push it to the right. Whenever I push something to the right, I put soluble. So, I push this to the right. That means insoluble goes here. And what do I write here? Soluble. Then I push this to the right. So this one goes to soluble. And what do I write here? Always soluble. Always in the empty blank, you write soluble. So this is how I memorize it. Calzone, NaOH, NH3. And you keep on pushing it to the right. Okay. Now, what do, what does this show me? It shows, by the these are the char charges, 3 plus, 2 plus. Okay. Uh, what does this show me? It shows me that Ca2 plus, when it forms a precipitate with NaOH, if you dissolve it in excess, by this is when you dissolve it in excess. So when you add, keep on adding NaOH, it won't dissolve. The white, the white precipitate will stay there. But if you dissolve it in NH3, this dash means also it doesn't form any precipitate. Okay, no reaction. How about Al3 plus? When you dissolve it in NaOH excess, you keep on adding, the precipitate is actually going to dissolve in that NaOH. It's soluble. But when you dissolve it in NH3, it's going to stay uh, suspended. It won't dissolve in the NH3. But there's still going to be precipitate, huh? But here, this is the only time there's no precipitate because I'm telling you there's no reaction. Okay, Zn2+, plus, it's going to dissolve in NaOH. It's going to form a precipitate and that the precipitate will dissolve. And then, same thing with NHT. Okay? Again, this is how you memorize the table. But then, these flame tests, oh, no, no, no. These uh, tests, you memorize them on your own. Like the ones we already did, like NH4, calcium. Okay, NH4, I, I told you it is the same as NO3. But uh, when you add 
any o h you don't add aluminium here actually add any o h you don't add uh, there I add it. Oh yeah, here you add an OH. Yeah, yeah. Don't be confused from the OH. They're adding any OH. Anyway, so here you get ammonia like before, but this one you don't add aluminium. Okay, uh, these are all of them. Calcium, as we said it. Uh, aluminium, we said zinc, we said it. Okay, Fe and Fe. Uh, there's two plus and there's three plus. Okay, this is very important. For two, okay. Uh, for two, it forms green precipitate. Okay. Green precipitate. How I how I memorized it is green. It either forms green or red brown, and I memorized green is lighter than red, so that means it's gonna be two or three, which is lighter two or three. I keep two, so that's why and I, I memorized it like this. Green is lighter than red, so Fe two plus. And what what are the characteristics of iron? Fe any? They don't dissolve in excess. Nothing. Not NH three. Not uh, any OH. They don't dissolve. They only form a precipitate. Then you're gonna see the over here in chromium, forget about copper, in chromium, when you add any OH, you get a green precipitate as well. And okay, it's gray green, but still green. How are you gonna know? Now here's the thing. If you dissolve Fe2 plus or Fe3 plus in excess, as the Fe2 plus, because this one's green also, it will not dissolve, right? But here in chromium, it dissolves in excess any OH, not in NH3, only in any OH. So if you add excess any OH, the Fe won't dissolve, but the chromium will dissolve. That's how you know whether it's chromium or Fe. Then for copper, copper, and I memorized it, it's the only one that has blue. Whenever you see blue, psora, 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 but hot till lay copper. Meshe, blue precipitate is formed, okay, it only dissolves in excess ammonia. Okay, as long, yeah. Binding carbonate, we did it, sulfate, we did it, sulfite, we did it, nitrate, we did it, chloride, chloride, we said AGCL gets you white, bromine, we said it gets you creamy, I, I minus, we told you it gets uh, yellow. These one here, test for gases, know them. Okay, make sure to know them. Okay, hydrogen gas, it explodes. Oxygen, it writes a glowing splint. Remember, when something burns, it burns with oxygen. That's why to light something, you need oxygen. NH3, ammonia gas, uh, know that it changes the, it makes it blue, makes the red litmus paper blue. Okay, I wrote it up uh, in the notes. Uh, it turns the red litmus paper blue. Carbon dioxide, we told you, it turns lime water to milky or cloud white, okay? Uh, if the gas is passed through, okay. Okay, you can read this yourself. Chlorine gas, you can. It you should know it bleach. It bleaches litmus paper. For those of you who know, chlorine is actually used uh, in cleaning because it's a good bleach. Okay, uh, so it turns red, then it gets bleached. Sulfur dioxide, okay, we know that it decolorizes the potassium manganate from purple into colorless. And the water vapor, water vapor. This one I didn't touch on it, but you should know it. And how it it. Anhydrous copper sulfate, it turns blue copper carbon paper pink. Yeah, so it turns cobalt chloride from blue to pink, and it turns cobalt, uh, sorry, it turns copper sulfate into blue. Okay, you memorize this yourself. Uh, here are the properties of gases, you can memorize them. Uh, they weren't in the quiz, maybe she asked them, but you should know if it's denser than air, uh, then you use downward delivery. If it's less dense, uh, then it you do upward delivery. Like hydrogen is less dense, so it's upward delivery. Uh, oxygen is almost so you use over water, okay? Because air is insoluble in water, I think. Or as you know, oxygen is some one of them, but you use it over water. Carbon dioxide is denser, so it's downward delivery. Chlorine is downward delivery. Sulfur dioxide downward delivery. Uh, and then NH three is less less dense, okay? So it's upward delivery. So only ones that are upward delivery are hydrogen and NH three, the hydrogen containing compounds. Hello, let's start. Okay, which mixture here is separated by adding water, stirring, and filtering? This is the keyword. Filtering means no, not dissolve. Okay, I will she, I'm gonna cancel one, some out. Okay, BACL2. We know chlorine dissolves with everything except AG and PB. Go back to the notes if you want, I'm not going back. So this one dissolves. We know NA always dissolves, so this one dissolves. Adi, we're done from this. Here, I'm going to skip this one, so I'm going to do the rest. CH, uh, C2H5OH, this is glucose, it was in the notes, not my notes, the chapter 2 notes from SDP. They said glucose dissolves, so easy. CH3COOH, anything that has CH3COO, uh, acetate, always dissolve, done. Copper, magnesium, these are just ions, so they will dissolve. Salt, we know salt always dissolves in water, so it will dissolve. Here, 
Na will dissolve, but CaCO3, remember, CO3 never dissolves. It only dissolves when, when you have Na, uh, K+, plus, NH4+, plus. remember those group one, the, uh, the first one. You can go back on the notes, but again, the whole quiz is Hefels. Okay, what's true about NaCl? This one, memorize it, okay? Obviously, NaCl, it's ionic, so it will dissolve in water to give me positive and negative ions. And, akid, it's going to give me, when it gives ions, it will conduct electricity in water. Okay, easy. Uh, which is true about HCl, and the same as NaCl, again, it will give me positive and negative ions, it will conduct electricity, because it will give me H plus and Cl minus. How can ions arise in a solution? Okay, ions can already be present in ionic solids, so they will already be in the ionic solid, NaCl, HCl, these are all ionic solids, well, no, HCl isn't, but NaCl, KCl, uh, whatever. They can already be present in molecular compounds, la. okay, la. but... Some molecular compounds, such as HCl, may dissociate to form ions, but they are not already present in molecular compounds, okay? They can form in solution through the dissociation of metallic compounds. La, shukhas metals, it's only ionic solids. Uh, they can form in solution through dissociation of ionic solids. Question five, uh, which of the following is true regarding the ions from HCl and ACL? Aqueous ions are individual species with properties possessed by the materials from which they came. And I put this correct, I think. Yeah, yeah, that's wrong. Okay, this one I think is wrong. It's because the properties each ion has is unique to itself. Yani AG is different from CL. Doesn't mean if they came from AGCL, yani they're both the same. No. The properties of a particular kind of ion are independent of the source. Exactly, see? So they're independent. Chloride ions from NACL have the same properties as chloride ions in an aqueous solution of HCl, right? Chlorine with chlorine, they're the same chlorine. Even if they come from different compounds. Chloride ions from NACL cannot be distinguished from chloride ions in HCl. They're the same. Chloride ions are distinguishable from chloride ions. No. All chloride ions are the same, which is true about metals. They tend to react by losing one or more electrons to form positive, right? Metals usually become positive. And sodium, which is a metal, reacts with chlorine to form NaCl. The rest is obviously wrong. Uh, bromine reacts with potassium, a non-metal. We know potassium is a metal. They tend to gain to form negative. No, metals don't become negative. And they uh, gain to become positive. No, that's wrong. You don't gain and become positive. You gain and become negative. Which of the following is insoluble? Again, same notes. This one, memorize it, CuO, okay? PbSO3. SO3 is soluble with everything except Pb. Uh, SO4 and SO3 are soluble with everything except Pb, right? I think it was, I think I'm not wrong. Over here. Yeah, except with Pb. Uh, go back here. Na2CO3, it has Na, so it's all right. It's, you know it's soluble. OH is soluble with everything except the big ones, the big ones. Let's call these the big six, okay? So it's insoluble if you accept the big six, right? Uh, so FeOH, K2SO3, K2 is part of the big six, so a key it will be soluble. ADCl, it's insoluble. Remember, Cl is soluble with everything except Ag and Br. As the Br, Ba, as the Pb, not Br, Pb. Yeah. Uh, which of the following can be identified with the gas? Okay, that forms lime water. Okay, it forms a precipitate in lime water. Which one has to do with lime water? We said CO2, carbon dioxide. Okay, which one here will get me carbon dioxide? CO3 to minus. Okay. Uh, okay, what is the law of equilibrium? The law of equilibrium, Akid, it's the, it's the reactants divided by the products. But this has to be aqueous or gas. Here, it's solid, so this doesn't count. So uh, this one, Akid, since its coefficient is 2, it's going to become squared. It doesn't have a coefficient. Don't be tricked by the charge, huh? Like this. أكيد هني بيكتبوا لك شارج أنا ما أنخلي خلاص. Question ten. What is the law of equilibrium for the reaction above and specify the state symbol? Okay, the law of equilibrium. It's the reactants divided by the product. But the product is salt, so we don't count it. So it's just concentration of the reactant. It doesn't have coefficient. Okay, so we don't write the power. And they said specify the state symbol, so you write it like this. Okay. Question eleven. Okay. Okay, there's a lot of reading in these questions. A few drops of sodium carbonate solution, Na2CO3, were added to the solution. A white precipitate forms, and this precipitate dissolves in HCl. Okay, then they told us, a blue flame turns into a brick red flame. When you see brick red flame, no, it's Ca2+. Only one gets you see a brick red, and it's Ca2+. Okay, a white precipitate forms when NaOH is added, and they told us it's insoluble in excess space. Okay. A command we know, remember, in our table, calzone, right? It was NaOH and uh, NH3. Remember, for Ca+, it was insoluble 
هون it was no reaction so they said when NaOH is added it's insoluble so أكيد this further proves that it's Ca plus question 12 okay given the following test to identify an unknown ion X to an aqueous solution they added sodium hydroxide so NaOH and they got dirty green green precipitate means two things either Fe2 plus or Cr something something I forgot the charge but anyway how do you know if it's CR? They'd say... Uh, I, I think it wasn't in the choices. I think it wasn't in the choices. But usually, if it's to distinguish, they should tell you that it didn't dissolve. Um, FE. They should tell you it didn't dissolve. Yeah. Yeah. See here, if they told you that this one dissolved, then you would choose CR. But I don't think there's CR in the choices. Uh, so it doesn't matter. Uh, but if you had to choose between Fe or NCR, the one that dissolves in NaOH is Cr. The one that doesn't dissolve is Fe2. Fe2 doesn't dissolve in NaOH and NH3. Okay, a few drops of sodium hydroxide solution are added. A rusty brown precipitate forms. What gets me brown? Fe3+. Plus. Always, immediately. Okay, Fe3+. Brown, Fe3+. Plus. I won't even continue reading. Okay, 14. Okay. Here they got us A, B, C, D. They added some A, G, N, O, 3. And we want to see. In A, we got the yellow. We know yellow is iodine. White, chlorine. Creamy, Br. O, D, no change. Okay, there's only one other choice, and it's fluoride from the multiple choice. Okay, man, here they told us it's halides. Halides, here, F, C, L, B, R, I. Acetine doesn't count uh, when you're testing. Okay, whole flame test. For yellow, it's sodium. Lilac violet is potassium. Crimson red. Crimson red, not brick red. Crimson red is lithium. Okay. Brick red, orange is calcium. Brick red. They have to say brick. Okay. So here, I'm going to skip. We'll do this fast. Reddish brown precipitate. Immediately. Brown, Fe3+. That's it. Green precipitate does not dissolve in excess sodium hydroxide. So you do Fe2+. Blue precipitate, sorry, copper. Anytime you see blue, copper. White precipitate with sodium hydroxide. Okay, so it dissolves in sodium hydroxide, but no precipitate forms. So it didn't say it dissolves in sodium hydroxide, sorry. They said precipitates with sodium hydroxide, but they said no reaction, no precipitate with ammonia. Which one? The only one that has no reaction with ammonia was actually Ca2+. Calzone. Calzone. Insoluble. No reaction. Soluble. Soluble. Insoluble. Soluble. Right? Push to the right. And put soluble. Push to the right and put soluble. Okay. And here we have acid NaOH or NH3. Okay. White precipitate with ammonia does not be dissolved in excess ammonia. So you get a precipitate with ammonia, but it does not re dissolve in excess ammonia. Let's see our table. Which one doesn't dissolve? It's Al. Right? Al3 plus. White precipitate with sodium hydroxide and it is really dissolves in ammonia. The one that only one that resolves in uh, ammonia is zinc. Okay. Green precipitate. What other green precipitate is there than Fe2 plus Cr? Okay. And they told us it's soluble come in. So it just further proves that it is Cr chromium. Choose the ions. Okay, I took reaction horn. Uh, as they sure. Uh, I took ions. Choose the ions that form a white precipitate upon addition of sulfate. Uh, potassium sulfate. Here. Okay. I don't know about Ca plus. I don't know why they put it. Uh, oh no, but I do know where they put it. Over here with SO4, what are the two things that won't allow SO4 to dissolve? Barium, calcium, and lead. Okay, so here in this case, calcium and barium. If it doesn't allow to dissolve, that means it, gets, it forms a precipitate, right? Okay, choose the ion that forms a white precipitate upon addition of an aqueous solution of NaCl. White precipitate, Cl. Cl, how do we test it? We add AgNO3. So I keep Ag. Plus. Which one give me creamy precipitate with bromine? Again, Ag. Because when you add AgNO3, it will react with the bromine. Okay, which of the given ions releases a gas turns lime water? Lime water is carbonate. It's CO2, which is this, uh, how do you get carbon dioxide gas from testing for carbonate ions? Which of the given ions releases a pungent smell? By the way, if you guys can go back onto other questions and see and know, oh, if you forgot my son, what, does, what do I have to react the carbonate ions with? Just go back to another question. They said acid. Okay, and no, Anna, come on. I, we are, we're humans. At the end of the day, we will forget. It's fine. Which of the given ions release a pungent smell? The pungent smell. Pungent smell, that means ammonia gas. Okay. 
ammonia gas. We have two possibilities. Okay, either NH4 plus or NO3. Let's see. Which one they said? Did they mention aluminum? No. So it's ammonium. Okay, here they said it turns moist red litmus to blue. So again, that's ammonia. When heated with aluminium powder. When they mention aluminium, it's NO3. Okay? Which is nitrate. Uh, which of the given ions release a gas with a choking smell? Choking smell, yani SO2 gas. How do you get SO2 gas from SO3, huh? What was SO4? SO4 was white precipitate, huh? That won't be SO4. Yeah, okay. To get SO2, you need to test for SO3. Okay. Well, like I told you, it's important to know that SO3 is sulfite and SO4 is sulfate. Now, I want SO3, so you choose sulfite. Very common mistake, huh? Okay. We want to see soluble, insoluble. If it forms a precipitate, I can insoluble. NA, it always dissolves, so soluble. AGCL, AG and CL. Remember, CL is soluble with everything except AG because this will form a white precipitate. Soluble. Oh, the insoluble, sorry. BASO4, remember so, SO4 is soluble with everything except BA and uh, calcium, sir. No, it wasn't calcium. I keep forgetting. Uh, SO4, BA, yeah, calcium. Oh, it is calcium. Okay, yeah. With calcium and barium. So, I keep it. It won't dissolve here. Insoluble. KF, potassium fluoride. K, it's part of the big six, so it will always dissolve. PBCL2, lead chloride. CL, dissolves with everything except lead AG and BR or BA, yeah, uh, lead and PB. Okay, and I have to revise this comment. Okay, yeah, so chlorine doesn't dissolve with PB, so I keep it, we will put it insoluble. Insoluble. BA NO3, if you see NO3, remember it will always dissolve. NO3 is part of the big six, I think. Uh, yeah, okay. Question 20, we're almost done. Okay, the constant concentrate. Okay, solubility, fast. This is solubility. You might get a few questions about the solubility graph. So make sure you read over the chapter two notes that are found on SDP. Maybe solve a few questions. Okay, and I'll try to go through it. Because the questions are very easy. You just subtract. There's no division or multiplication. It's usually just subtraction. You just subtract solubility two minus solubility to one. The constant concentration of a solute, concentration of a solute is called solubility. Okay, 21. Okay, a certain salt dissolves in water. If you raise the temperature, more solid dissolves. You many people know this. Into when you make caramel, by the way, when you make caramel, the sugar will not dissolve in the water unless you begin to heat it. Okay, because unless it will become saturated. Electrolytes are ionic or molecular compounds that are soluble in water. Okay, memorize. Electrolytic solutions conduct electricity due to the presence of heated ions. When we all ions will dissolve. Okay, a metal is on the left. Non-metal. I'm not. I. This is very easy. 24, negative, uh, okay, again, very easy. Uh, you do it yourself. To test for NO3 minus, add a few drops of, okay, NO3. Remember, NO3 is the one you need aluminum for. We're going to add NaOH as usual, but we're going to add aluminum powder. And we set to warm, okay? When when we do this, NH3 gas should be released. And how do we know it? Effervescing means release of bubbles. And it will release wet, it, it will make the wet red litmus paper turn blue. That's what damp means. When you see damp, it means wet, yani. Okay, to identify an ion X, these tests are conducted. We added sodium hydroxide, yani NaOH, they added NaOH to the solution, and they got a white precipitate that dissolves in excess NaOH. Okay, yani, we're talking about this NaOH NH3 again. NaOH, I'm not going to write, any, you know, I'll just write it. Okay, cal zone. Insoluble, no reaction. Soluble, insoluble. Soluble, soluble. Okay, then they added ammonia. And they showed that it dissolved in ammonia. Which one is that? Only one that dissolves in ammonia is ZN. Okay, excess ammonia. I'm going to keep this table here because I think you need it for one more question. You don't need it for here. But here, Psura, they're testing, and what they said is pale blue. As soon as you see pale blue, Psura. Balamat ulshi, copper. Okay, come in. I think in the flame test, it's also pale blue. Cu2 plus. Oh, no, it's, yeah, blue. Not pale blue, blue, blue green. Okay. Uh, 28, okay, to an aqueous solution, so here, uh, they added to sodium hydroxide, they said a white precipitate form. In the choices, no other choice makes sense other than AL3. Okay, the other ones were like, um, 
And see, but the answer is AL3 because you're getting a white precipitate. The other ones don't form precipitates. They always dissolve. I think it was like NA or, uh, I don't know, they were like these big six, you know. Question 29. Okay, they added uh, to an aqueous solution a few drops of sodium hydroxide NaOH and they got a gas, okay. Uh, and this gas turns white at this paper to blue. So, okay, they're talking about NH3. The gas is NH3. How do you get NH3? Either from NO3 or NH4+. plus. Well, okay, in this case, they didn't mention any aluminum. If they mentioned aluminum, it would be NO3. But they didn't, so it would be NH4+. plus. Thank you so much for watching, and good night. Good night. Good luck.